Welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over valuable tidbits and nuggets of information which you can use at the repair bench or at your home shop. Uh, today we're going to be talking about files and using different techniques uh, for woodwind repair. So make sure that you take the hashtag Sax Files. There it is right there. Take put it Sax up in Files there. and put that in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe this video uh, and the other streams that we do so you can get more content from us. We've actually, Ryan, we've been doing a lot of a lot YouTubing. Of, this is our lately. casual weekly show. We've been doing, we got a set. That's right. Rich. We got a set. I don't have a trailer yet, okay? And they, they, don't, they still don't meet my demands in reading my rider. But we have a set. We've got some highly produced YouTube videos coming out. It's going to be way different from this. I yes. mean, we, we, yes. we're basically filming this with a potato. Yeah. Um, you know. Nice one. So, yeah. So, it's, it's going to be good. If you think this is okay, <laughs> the other stuff is going to be really okay. And, it, and, it's, and we're doing those because we're revamping our repair kit instructions and we're doing some more kind of basic uh, techniques for repair and doing some little videos. If you have uh, no repair experience, those are great. It's, it's for the player and amateur, hobbyist. Yes. Yeah. And so we, we kind of want to kind of concentrate on a few more advanced techniques here, but it's also important just to get to do basic stuff for everybody just because the basic information is not always out there. And uh, we have so much experience here. Might as well. We do. We are very basic. Here. <laughs> Let people know about that. Also, Sax Files, put in the comments below. You can win uh, a set of, let me switch over. You can win a set of sanding sticks. By the way, our sanding sticks, Ryan, I didn't know if you know this, are actually, oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Uh, no, it's go. never the wrong one. Uh, it's never the wrong one. <laughs> those are, we've actually got them cheaper than Amazon right now. Whoa. And so you're going to win a set of those if you put Saks Files in the comments below. The winner of last week's giveaway uh, is was a uh, winner. That was for our gift card uh, to use at musicmedic.com. And that's going to be Kenneth Ewald. Ewald? Nice. Ewald? E-W-A-L-D. Kenneth, make sure you send an email to me, rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com, and we will get you your prize. Uh, so, Ryan, let's talk about, we're going to talk about hand files, we're going to talk about needle files, yep. and let's start with kind of just general technique of hand files. Sure. And what would maybe be, uh, what's your setup on the bench, and what's a general recommendation for those who are getting started and need sure, to Sure, sure. I'll show, show them kind of what I'm working with here. Let me show you what I'm working with. Um, so we have, again, Sax Files, folks. Put it in the comments Thank down you. here. Like, share, subscribe, and, and, and click the little bell icon. Don't oh, the yeah, little bell. yeah, this yeah. Is, this is my, sorry, it's a heart, but um, click the bell icon. There you go. So here we are. I got my, my files. Um, typically, we have, uh, you know, machinist files. We have a flat file. We have a half round file. I have two different types. I have a coarse and I have a fine. Uh, same thing with my half round. The reason why they call them half round is because one side is actually half round. If I were to draw a picture of that, it would look like that. Nice. So you can see it's half round. So we have the one side that is flat, the other side that is round, and you can see the whole thing is tapered, different shapes of files. And those are the ones that I like to use primarily uh, filing key work if I need to remove quite a bit of material. And I don't want to use any kind of rotary powered thing or belt sander or whatever. This is, again, we're moving uh, you know, small amounts of metal at one time. So these are the ones I use primarily. I also then have my set of needle files. And if you'll notice on these guys, if I pick them up and show the back end of them, there we go. So I have the shape, and this is my nugget tidbit of wisdom for you all. Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly not a tip or a trick. No, absolutely not. We would not trick you like that. So mm -hmm. what I've done is I've drawn the shape. So this little round guy right here, guess what? That's my round file. Okay, this little triangular one right there, you guessed it, triangle file. So it just makes it a little bit easier when I'm looking and it's in it, they're on my bench, this is what I see. So I know if I wanna grab, oh, the half round, there we are. So it just makes it a little bit easier. Um, and then finally we have the sanding stick. So this is kind of an order of most aggressive hand file, not as aggressive, and then Technically, these aren't files. We know. You don't need to comment. These aren't files. Okay? <laughs> they are sanding sticks. But these I use for that final finishing because they do come in a variety of different grits. We have my 120, my 240, my 320, my 400, and then finally my 600. And essentially, these are 
sanding round sanding bands that go onto this little sanding apparatus that is spring loaded. You just put them on like so. And then they have the different shapes of the stick that you can use. You can use this flat portion, you can use this, you can use this whole section, or you can use this rounded section. So they do come in handy for a variety of different sanding and filing purposes. So Hmm. What's next, Rich? Oh, Lay it on me. Boom. Well, Send it over to Rich. Sax files. Uh, what's next is we're going to talk about our flat file, using it with some, yeah, some uh, filing techniques. A couple of filing techniques yeah. for key work. And we don't have a bench motor here, but if you want to simulate. Uh, I think the story we need to tell, we told it last time we did this, uh, yes. is you'll notice these guys right here. You'll always want to have some kind of handle. Okay, When you buy this file, and you can buy the, you know, from anybody really. And you can buy this handle from anybody. I mean, you don't have to get it from us, right. Music Medic. Um, but I would always encourage you to use a handle because first off, you get a little bit more control if you're filing something rather than holding it dainty like a, yeah. like, you know, like yeah. this. You get a little bit more grip. The other thing, very, very important, folks, if you're using this on any kind of machinery, you're using this on a, a bench motor, you're spinning a piece and you're filing this, or you're using this on a lathe, the other important thing is you want to have this because notice this sharp little point right there. If I were to file something and this is for to kick back, this would go right in my hand, which is yeah. I think we had yes. a tick here that happened to him where he comes and all of a sudden he's like, uh, I got a problem and he's got a file sticking out of his hand. So of course, Rich was like, what's the problem? I remember that. Yes. He so, had to go home early that day. He had to go yeah. home. He it was excused, but luckily they did pay him for the rest of the day. That's well, So he got a full day's pay. <laughs> so, and a free file out of it. That's, but very important folks, you'll notice just about all of my files have handles on them. So very, very important, better control and the whole safety thing. So, and then you can draw pictures on the back of them. So there you go. Arts and crafts. So very let's cool. get into some file techniques. Okay. Um, you notice here I'm using a vise, and I always find it much, much easier when I'm filing something to, to clamp it in the vise, um, and then you can use the file with both hands, like so. Okay, and there's there's kind of two different techniques, uh, and it's a little controversial in the filing world, which do I just go forward, or do I go forward and then draw it back? Okay, some people will say by drawing it back that you are, um, you are uh, dulling the teeth on the file. Some people say that drawing it back, you actually release the chips of whatever you're filing from the teeth. So you can see it goes kind of both ways. There's actually yeah. a video on YouTube where a guy um, kind of dispelled the myth and he did a very scientific method of checking to see if going forward and then back actually dulls the teeth or is it quicker in filing. I think we'll put a link to that hopefully in the comments, mm -hmm. um, but it is very interesting. Me, myself, when I'm trying to remove a lot of material, I will go forward like this, but the closer I get to having a smoother finish, sometimes I will draw it back, especially when I'm using my needle files. Okay, these are much finer files, and if I'm looking for a, a smoother finish without a lot of file marks, I will draw it back. Okay, so I'll go a little bit forward, and you can see just back and forth, back and forth. So that's kind of my two cents on filing technique using some kind of holding apparatus, whether it's a bench vise or a sanding block or whatever. Um, the, another technique, another um, tidbit of insight yes. is you can also put the file in the vise. So I'll switch my vise around. I will clamp my file directly into the vise. And let's say I'm trying to file something perfectly flat. Okay, I have a little piece of brass here that I just took a Sharpie and just kind of painted it so you guys can see. I want to file this flat. If I were to hold this in the vise and, and use my file, chances are I would get a lot of this and I would end up rounding this out and this wouldn't be perfectly flat. So I can put my file in a vise and then just move my part over top. Image of the shape of the file to help me file something flat. And you can see that's just a few strokes right there. It's staying pretty flat. Okay, so that's another technique. And you'll notice I am going back and forth. Okay, you can just go one direction. But I like to go both. So there you go. Filing it nice and flat. That's pretty quick. What about uh, a contoured shape? Absolutely. That's another great thing. Yeah, if you're looking for, let's say, if you need to file a key arm, 
you can see this little dip here. Okay? I wouldn't want to use this square file to try to file that nice smooth contour. Okay? I would use a file that has already a contour built into it. So here I would go ahead and clamp my part or my key into my vise. Well, that vice is noisy this it morning. Needs, it needs a little bit of grease. It needs a little bit of grease cow. on this, but that's okay. So I, I put my, my part into my vice, and I can take advantage of the shape of the file and actually file it just like that. Now, Ryan, could you just uh, give them a little visual rep representation of the half round shape? Just uh, maybe. One uh, absolutely. Here we go. So if we go, my, my obviously my flat file, flat like this, my half round. So I would take advantage of this contour for in this shape right here. So, and that's the nice thing about my needle files is they do come in a variety of different shapes and contour. Which there's round ones. I believe they call those rat tail files. Mm -hmm. There's triangular ones, square ones. Um, this is a small flat file, which has a shape like that. There are some that are double, double uh, round. I don't know if that's the technical term, mm -hmm. but they have two contours to them. One has a little bit more of a gradual arc and the other one has a little bit a sharper arc to it. Could we talk to them a little bit about how you use the needle files? I know you just sure. talked about the shape, drawing the shape on the handle, but maybe we could talk about some areas of woodwind repair where you use your needle, your needle files. files. Yes, absolutely. Um, one very important area that I use them on are on side keys. Okay, So this is a side B flat lever, lever and a side C and this fork right here, you can actually file. So if we go to an overhead shot and you can see, if I take this fork and I look directly at it, like this, straight on, you'll notice some manufacturers have the jaws that are square. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually round those out and eventually make them look like this. Because you have this, this key that kind of pivots in here, if I were to put this, you can see how it would kind of hit the edges. Versus on this side, you can see how it would be a lot smoother. For that, I'm going to use a needle file. Okay, and the reason why I can use this is because the needle file is small enough that it will fit in that little space. So, so Ryan, this is kind of an example of us changing the saxophone or the body or yes. the keywork itself to uh, mold to the materials that we're going to use? Absolutely, yeah. Some okay. people will change the materials to fit the space. Here we're altering the space to fit the materials that we'll eventually put in there. Cool. Um, easy way to do that, and you can see I'm just back and forth. So I'm just filing one way and on the other way, just to kind of round out those jaws. Oh, Marcos from Brazil. Ah. saying he is online. Well, hello, sir. Good to see you. So you're using a back and forth motion on yep. the, the forks? Yep, just kind of rounding out those jaws. Just like that. And again, I use, like to use the needle files because it's a little bit finer. The reason why I don't use this is because, well, it's just not big enough to fit in. Or it's too big. Too big to fit too big, in. Too big. Too big. So. What about uh, if you're going to be doing... Similar thing uh, for spring clearance. Yes. We're talking if we're, you know, maybe reassembling, we've overhauled a horn, we've put new springs in. A lot of times, you know, you see this little spring catch here, you'll put it in, and maybe that spring bumps up against the key. There's some, some clearance issues. Well, what you can do is you can actually file away. You can see that key arm that kind of sticks up a little bit. Okay. You can take your file, whatever shape you want, and you can just file some clearance. So when the spring is engaged in the catch, it's not hitting the underside of this key arm anymore. Okay, so that's another example. Uh, one more example, which is a great example, would be the A key. Hmm. Okay, How we have that felt underneath that goes over top of our bis key. Okay, sometimes it has, and you can see this one does, has that little, that little arm that's soldered on. Okay, It's very tough to put a nice flat piece of felt there with that arm. It kind of sticks up and makes a little bulge makes kind of a, you know, a little area that wears a little bit more than, you know, the other pieces of felt. So you can file this. You can file that flat. This will allow you to put larger material in, gives you a little bit more clearance, 
again, clamp it against my vise. And here I'm trying to remove, uh, you know, a little bit more material rather than, you know, using my needle files. I'm going to use my half round, my coarse file. So now you're doing a combination of, of things. You're, you're filing for clearance, but also for the contour? Cause... Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to file that area flat. And you'll notice I'm keeping my fingers here to kind of guide it. Main thing is so I don't scratch this pad cup. But I want to make sure that this bottom of this pearl holder is completely flat. I want to get rid of that little nub that's soldered on. Is that going to compens uh, compensate? Is that going to compromise the strength of the key or anything? It, it shouldn't as long as you don't file too much, which is why I'm using a hand file versus like a rotary, a Dremel, a Fordham to kind of get in there, or even a belt sander to just okay. take too much. Okay. So I can always take a little bit less using a hand file and kind of control the amount that I'd like to remove. So there you go. What about, uh, now this is kind of going back to the needle files. We're talking about uh, a couple weeks ago, we did a video on how to replace a rod on a yes, wooden a key. hinge rod. Yep. You just talk to us about what you do with the rod and the slot. Sure. What I use to make that slot, and we're talking about the end of a hinge rod if you watched last week. If you didn't, uh, we'll, we'll go back and watch it. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll wait. Now, <laughs> so now that you've watched it, okay, at the end of the rod after you've cut the threads, the other side you need to make that slot for the screwdriver tip to, slip, to, to fit in. Um, and rather than just take a, a jeweler saw and try to saw it in, I will create a little groove and we'll pretend that this is the end of a rod. It's a black piece. It's there, I swear. Okay. And I will use my triangular file to actually file a groove on the top of that rod, and then I will use my jeweler saw to actually file that notch. So, oh, that's really cool. I think. Very good. <laughs> now, Ryan, you approve. <laughs> uh, let's let's move over to the finest of the grits in today's uh, video. Here, let's move over to the. Uh, the sanding sticks. Now, remember, if you're just tuning in, if you take that hashtag sax files and put it in the comments below, you're going to be entered in to win a set of, I was about to say this set, but it's going to be a set of the sanding sticks. We have these cheaper than Amazon right now. We're doing, we're kind of kicking ass. I don't want to say or try to sell or give you any sort of tip on it's up where, to you, folks. where it's... you could get these cheaper, uh, but the set of five sanding sticks uh, that Ryan's holding in his hand here. We're going to give that away next week. Just take Sax Files, put it in the comments below. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel too so you can like, be... share, and subscribe. Yes. Share. And the bell. And the bell. And, Click and the, the bell. bell. Uh, but so, Ryan, let's talk about the sanding sticks sanding and how you use sticks. those. Sure. I love these. And like we said, these are kind of the least aggressive of them all. We have our coarse and our fine, you know, large machinist files. We have our um, a little bit finer, the, the needle files, which is good for finishing work. And this is really good for, you know, um, extra finishing if you need to kind of um, remove scratches, mm. file marks, and they come in a variety of different grits. We have 120, 240, 320, 400, and then finally 600 grit. And you can use them kind of depending on your situation. Um, I like to use the sanding sticks when I need to uh, kind of maybe refinish a surface. Uh, let's say like a key touch. So what I have here is a low C sharp lever. And a lot of times, you know, players, they have maybe very acidic oils or whatever, it, it gets worn. So I want to kind of flatten this out. Um, so I can put this in my vise. And I can use these sanding sticks depending on whatever grit I need. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the 400 grit here. And I can use this flat portion of it, flat against the key, and kind of refinish, get rid of any lumpiness that's in that key touch. I can go, you know, and even smooth it out even further, move up to my 600 grit. If it's really rough, you can actually start with a file. Okay, but I like to go with the, the sanding sticks to just kind of finish them out. And that's a great way to kind of blend. If you've done with your, if you've started with your files, you get rid of those file marks using your sanding sticks. Yeah. So we've talked about, now this is pre-buffing, right? Yes. If you're, if you're yep. gonna go ahead and buff too. Exactly, yeah. Kind of, this will get rid of a lot of the scratches and file marks and unevenness, and then if you're gonna put a finish on it, you know, buff it and polish it. 
Now, Ron, how did you know the grits of the different Ha ha, it's a trick. Sticks? It's a it's a fancy trick that I did. It took me I got in here early and of I did course. this, but if you'll notice on the sanding sticks themselves, written in Sharpie, right there, this is another nugget of wisdom. Wisdom, a good wisdom. Nug nugget, nugget of wisdom. Yeah. So yeah, rather than remembering, you know, oh, the red one is the 120, the green one is the 320, uh, yellow I think is 400, 240 is the blue one, 600. The only tough one is black <laughs> on black. It's a little tough. You may have to memorize that the black one is 600, um, but that's another little a tip you guys can do is actually write it on. Um, it's a lot like what I do with my needle files writing mm. on the back of the handle. Anything just to make life a little bit easier. That's right. So. Absolutely. Let's get to our final point here about cleaning a file and yes. how you do that. And before we go, make sure you take sax files, put it in the comments below. You can win a set of sanding sticks for this week. And don't forget, if your name is Kenneth, uh, to send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com. Kenneth Ewald. Yep. E Ewald, Ewald. There you go. So, All right. cleaning uh, your files, especially yes, when you get into the machinist files, okay, the coarse ones. You know, the material will kind of stick in the teeth, and what we use to get rid of that would be a file brush. Okay, one side has these nylon bristles. You can brush all the, the loose debris out, um, and then it also has these metal teeth, which are great for getting all that stuff that's in there. And I tend to go sideways because that's usually how the, the teeth go. So to brush them out, I'm kind of doing one of these to clean them up. Uh, depending on what material you're, you're filing, I know a lot of times aluminum uh, being somewhat you know softer, it, it tends to get in the teeth quite a bit um, just to occasionally brush that out, clean out your files. And then you're usually pretty good to go. Um, the one thing I will say is I don't really use the needle files so much on steel. Okay. okay? I will use this on brass quite a bit. bit. Um, these are, it's very fine. It's a very fine uh, tooth, so it doesn't really do much when you're filing steel. Although, uh, I kind of break that rule occasionally. So, there you okay. go. Take it for what it's worth, that nugget, that steamy nugget of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been our Wednesday Wisdom. And uh, next week, we're going to go over straightening a saxophone body, going back to the dent work side of things. Oh, we are? Okay. All right. Got to get ready for that. Figured that out. Yeah. Uh, put sax files in the comments below. Make sure you enter to win the prize and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, happy repairing.